everybody. I'm meteorologist Paul Hagen. We're going to spend a little bit of time talking about the possibilities of Hurricane Dorian because while the track continues to be consistent, pointing towards Dorian, now a Category 2 storm as it came this morning, running along the coast and then brushing right along the North Carolina coast. There's still a couple different ways it could go. Three different ways that we've narrowed down the possibilities. Of. One is that it follows the National Hurricane Center path, more or less. That's the most likely scenario, better than a 50-50 chance of that. The worst case scenario is that it follows closer to Matthew's track from a few years ago, which is right along the coastline and eventually a little farther inland into North Carolina. I think only about a 1 in 10 chance of that. It's the worst case scenario because it brings much more in the way of rainfall and the tornado threat into central North Carolina. Best case scenario for everybody, for us, for coastal communities, just everybody involved, is that it takes a sharper right turn and heads out into the Atlantic Ocean. It's about a one in three chance of that. We can certainly hope that that is the case. There's support from the various model data that could happen. We're tracking the difference between Dorian's forecast path and what happened with Matthew. Matthew was much closer to the coast. You can see a lot of similarities here, but all these storms, they're unique. Dorian, this is its projection. It doesn't mean it's necessarily going to follow the red line, but that's the forecast for now. If it jogs just a little bit to the west, that brings even more similarities compared to what happened with Matthew. And the problem is the storms, as they interact with land, they weaken. That's what Matthew did. And usually we think of that as a good thing. The wind speeds slow down, but when the wind speeds slow down, the rain spreads out. A strong hurricane, Category 4, Category 5, spinning so fast to keep the heaviest rain really confined to basically the core of the storm. When those winds slow down, then the rain spreads out. We saw that with Matthew. We saw that with Florence. We've seen it over and over again. Harvey did something very similar. And there's support from the various forecast models for any scenario that you want to pick. They're all very tightly clustered together. We like to see model consensus, that they agree with one another, which roughly they do. But you can pick any one of these out, and there's the best case scenario, where that pink line takes it farther out into the Atlantic. Or the worst case scenario, the white line that brings it right along the coast, slowing it down, spreading the rain farther into central North Carolina. And we're right on that razor's edge between hardly any rain west of I-85 and too much rain, way too much rain closer to the coast. A small jog in that forecast track, say the track is five miles closer to the coast, well that could spread the rainfall pattern 25 miles to the west just because it spreads out so much more. So instead of an inch or two of rain in the triangle, we will look at the potential for four inches of rain. Instead of four to six inches of rain for parts of Wayne and Sampson counties, you could be looking at more than eight inches of rain. So as long as the track stays offshore of where it's currently forecast to be or even farther offshore, then the worst impacts won't be felt in central North Carolina. We're still going to get some impact both in terms of heavy rainfall and localized flooding and the potential for some sporadic power outages. The greatest threat is going to be to the east of I-95. But until that storm starts to pick up a little more speed later on today, we're really going to have to watch very carefully for any seemingly minor changes in the forecast track because those minor changes can lead to major changes in what we experience around here.